Let's imagine a situation where you are choosing between a tablet and a laptop. More precisely, between iPad Air and MacBook Air. I myself had to make that choice not long ago. My main concern was, will I be able to work on a tablet at all? Can it fully replace a laptop? And does it even make sense to compare these two devices? And if so, what can the tablet do and what is it good for? Can I code on it? Or write books? Or work in 3D? Well, I've done my research, I found all the answers, and I'm ready to share them with you. The tablet which you use to watch TV shows and your children to play PUBG is essentially the same computer. The only difference is in management and operating system. iOS, or rather iPadOS, differs from full-fledged operating system only by logic and multitasking. You cannot run 15 different programs on a tablet and quickly switch between them. But it's quite possible to simultaneously work with 3-4 applications at the same time. For example, I launch a browser, mail, Twitter and files. Or here's Affinity Photo, Files, Browser and a Messenger. By the way, in iPadOS 15 multitasking was improved a little more and now it's become much easier to launch it iPad has a built-in file manager called Files, the same file browser in which you can quickly and conveniently find your documents, send them to someone, or, on the contrary, save a document in Files. I've been actively using Files for a long time. All my work documents are on iCloud, and I have quick access to them from iPhone, iPad, and MacBook. It's very convenient, the documents are always at hand. An iPad Air or iPad Pro also have a Type-C connector that can easily connect to an external hard drive. I've used this many, many times. We connect and merge a video from it, or finished project onto it. For this, we just open two files applications and simply copy it. And this makes it possible to use the tablet like an ordinary office machine. Send the receipt by mail, save a contract, send a photo or a schedule. All this is quite possible to do on a tablet. And the whole package of programs for normal work is also here. Microsoft Office or Office programs from Google. Mail clients, by the way, my favorite is Spark. There are also notes, to-do lists, for example, Trello or Microsoft To-Do. And a whole mountain of applications. For the most basic office tasks, the tablet is fine. Or for a person who is not demanding, who occasionally needs to work with mail, with tables or read some contracts. The point is that a tablet is a computer and you can work on it. But this is not so convenient everywhere and not in all programs. For example, none of the spreadsheet applications have yet adapted their touch interface so that you can easily work with large files. Any average table on a tablet makes me nervous. Something small is not a problem, but as soon as they send me a huge file with a bunch of links, then everything immediately breaks down. It's a matter of habit, of course, but it's also a matter of adaptation. Nobody seriously works with spreadsheets on a tablet these days. Or, for example, no one does the bookkeeping on an iPad. I mean, fully-fledged accounting with invoices, statements and estimates, simply because there is no suitable software well adapted to this interface. As soon as it appears, accounts will switch the tablets, I'm sure. In the meantime, working with tables is more convenient on a MacBook, primarily due to the fact that these programs were originally created for a PC. And here we run into software and control logic. A simple example on how to change a software to unleash the full potential of the tablet was shown by drawing applications. In just a few years, it has evolved from a hobbyist program for learners to a professional tool because it's easier to draw on a tablet. It looks more like a canvas, it has better ergonomics, it has a bunch of covers and accessories, iPad has a convenient Apple Pencil stylus and some cool programs. For example, Procreate. A lot of professional artists draw in this application. And the beauty is that you can buy the most affordable tablet and stylus, for example, the iPad 2018 and the first generation Apple Pencil will cost you between three and four hundred dollars, which is significantly less than buying a MacBook Air and then another graphic tablet and a stylus. And here's another great example where iPad did its best, the Sharper 3D app. It is a 3D and cut program, and its trick is how it uses the stylus. Sharper 3D requires an Apple Pencil. The control logic is as follows. With your hands, you interact with the interface and settings, and with the stylus, with the object itself. This eliminates any accidental pressing on the object and achieves accuracy. In Sharper 3D, you can design layouts for 3D printing, you can create realistic renderings, and most interestingly, create furniture. 
not just layouts, but full-fledged CAD models, as in the Pro 100 program, which furniture makers loved very much. And all thanks to the form factor, where a laptop is simply inconvenient, where it needs additional tools, iPad can solve everything with a single stylus. For example, iPad is used by pilots to plan and plot routes. This is, of course, only an additional tool, but there are already professional applications for it, like Jarmin Pilot or Air Navigation Pro. At the same time, sailors and fishermen use the tablet to navigate and plot routes too. Trackers also use the tablet to navigate and register with tachographs or logbooks. But wait just yet to write off MacBook Air. Due to the comfortable keyboard, touchpad and screen size, it's simply irreplaceable in certain tasks. I've already spoken about tables, they are much more convenient on a computer, but there are other areas as well. For example, if you're going to learn some programming language. Of course, you can code on iPad, but due to the peculiarities of the operating system and screen size, it's not very convenient to do so. Besides, there is no normal software for this. I'm sure you'll correct me in the comments if you know any. And please do! So usually programmers use the Visual Studio Code Editor on iPad, which is launched on a remote computer, and on iPad you can access it through a browser. But to be honest, it's inconvenient. The screen is too small and there is no full multitasking. So MacBook Air can still beat the tablet in certain ways. For example, work in graphics programs and with raster and vector images. If you do 3D animation or compositioning, if you work with motion graphics, for example, if you work in Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator or After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, Blender or Motion 5, professional editing on a tablet is also not yet available. Batch processing of photos is more convenient on a computer, writing music or working in printing. There are also a number of tasks where tablet is not very suitable yet. Also, iPad cannot be connected to a large screen. Well, to be precise, it is possible, but there is a little sense in doing so. The picture is not scaled and repeats everything that happens on a tablet itself. Now, let's do the opposite and look at the more reasons to pick iPad over MacBook Air. For example, if you travel a lot and often write texts. Whether you are a copywriter, researcher, writer or journalist, it doesn't matter. You can also write large amount of text easily using an external keyboard. There are a whole bunch of applications that will help you with that. AI Writer, Notes, Google Docs, etc. Another scenario is if you write a lot by hand. A stylus plus a couple of handy programs will allow you to give up sketchbooks and notebooks forever. The tablet is very convenient while studying, where there are a lot of notes because there are such excellent applications that allow not only writing, but also simultaneously recording the lecturer's voice and also synchronizing yours and his recording. For example, Google Notes 5 and Notability. Oh man, I had I wished that back in my student days. For sure, I would have much better grades. The tablet is ideal if you do podcasts. In the Twisted Wave application, you can record yourself and then clean up and process the recording. In LumaFusion, a podcast can be mixed with music and effects and with other members, and in Affinity Photo, you can create a cover. Likewise, iPad Air will suit you if you shoot vlogs. All editing can be done without any problems in the editing program LumaFusion. You can connect a hard drive and headphones to the tablet, though you have to connect an adapter, but that's okay. On the iPad, you can conveniently process photos. The tablet has a good calibration and has a whole mountain of applications, including Lightroom. You can drop your LUTs and presets and quickly tweak the pictures on the road. But as I said, batch processing of images is certainly possible, but more convenient on a laptop. And of course, unlike MacBook, you can play on iPad. Here, firstly, there is Apple Arcade. And secondly, a bunch of ports and unique games. So iPad Air, due to its design and features of the operating system, in some areas really fits better and it's quite possible to work on it. But as we can see, iPad Air is not a replacement for MacBook Air. It's rather an alternative. If you were in doubt and you do not have specific tasks, I can safely assure you that you can buy yourself a tablet instead of a laptop. Or, for example, you can buy yourself an old and inexpensive iPad and try working on it. The trick is that even the old iPad Air 2 can do the same thing. Well, almost everything, you can't easily connect a hard drive to it. Let's talk money now, shall we? The basic MacBook Air will cost you $1,000. This is a 256GB version with a 7-core graphics system. iPad Air costs much less, $600. 
But here, first of all, I highly do not recommend taking the 64GB version. For a tablet, it's very small and you may face a lack of space. So it's better to take a 256GB model and it's already $750. The second generation Apple Pencil stylus and not the most expensive smart keyboard folio and you get the same $1050. That is, the price is comparable to MacBook Air. And finally, a little advice. If you do not draw, do not process photos, take an 11-inch or less tablet. The large 12.9-inch iPad Pro is actually really large and carrying such a giant tablet with the keyboard is even more difficult than carrying around a MacBook Air. The beauty of the tablet is in its compactness. I hope I helped you decide and by the way, if you have already switched to iPad for a long time, let us know what programs you work in. Perhaps this is how you help other users and we will find ourselves something new for the next videos. If you liked it, like it and do not forget to subscribe and we will see you very soon. It's one more tag. Thanks for watching.